So all you're gonna need today, if you would like to have two blocks, you can have two blocks, but we're gonna, not gonna need anything else. And let's go ahead and get on our mats. Here comes the dog. <laughs> and we're gonna begin in a comfortable seat. Bring your left hand to your belly. Bring your right hand onto your heart. Bow the head slightly, close the eyes. Just take these first few moments to ground down. Rooting through your sits bones, feeling that space where your body connects to your, the earth beneath you. Feeling the rise and fall of your belly underneath that left hand, connecting you to your breath. Feeling the rhythm of your heartbeat underneath your right hand, your source of life, that heart that beats in each and every one of us. No matter what we look like, no matter what our belief system, no matter who we are, we've all got that. And let's take three cleansing breaths together. Empty out everything you have on your exhale. And take a deep breath in. Pause at the top. Open mouth, exhale. Another inhale. Pause at the top. And let it go. Deepest breath yet, inhale. Hold. And let it go. Good. Come back to breathing in and out through the nose. And either in your head or out loud if you'd like, repeat these after me. May we remember our humanness. May we find comfort amongst change. May we utilize our inner power for good and positive change. May our hearts be open. May we use our voices for good. May we envision a better, brighter future. May we all one day see that we are one. Bring your palms together at your heart now. Stilling in those affirmations, one for each of your chakras. As you take a moment to set a personal intention for this practice. Let's seal those intentions in with a breath. Inhale. And sigh it out. Good. Release your hands down by your side. Blink the eyes open. Bring your chin back up to parallel. Inhale, reach the arms up, stretch, look up to the sky. Ground through your sits bones as you stretch through the fingers. Exhale, right hand by right hip, stretch up and over to the right with that left hand. Good, take a couple of breaths here, staying rooted in your sits bones. Maybe allowing that right elbow to start to drip closer to the floor. Big stretch through the right side body. Inhale, come back up through center. Push the floor away with your sits bones. Grow tall. Exhale, left hand by left hip. Arch up and over. Good. Couple breaths here. Keep pushing your ribs to the right to help contract through the left side. Spin your heart open. Stay soft, chin away from the chest. Inhale, back up through center, reach, stretch tall. Exhale, twist to the right, left hand to right knee. On your breath in, push through your fingertips, get tall, draw the shoulders down. Exhale, draw the navel in as you rotate a little bit deeper behind you. Inhale, come back through center, stretch up through the fingertips. Exhale to the left. Good, inhale, ground down through the sits bones, grow tall. Exhale, rotate just a little bit more. 
Inhale, come back through center, stretch it up. Exhale, hands to knees, seated cow pose, chin to chest, round the spine. Inhale, move, excuse me, that was cat pose, moving forward to a seated cow. Pull the heart forward, draw the shoulders back, arch the spine, lift the chin. Good, exhale, contract the belly, round the spine. Inhale, moving through a seated cow. Pull the shoulder blades back, belly in. Good, exhale to a cow, round the shoulders. Let your weight pull you back on those knees. And inhale, cow. Good, final one, exhale to your cat. Round it out. Then inhale to a neutral tabletop. Roll over your knees. Find your tabletop, tuck your toes. Sit your weight back onto your heels with your toes tucked, getting a nice stretch through your feet, through your toes, through your roots, your support system. Either keeping your hands on your mat or walking your hands up the thighs, bringing your full body weight down onto your tootsies. Letting the eyes close. Just breathing into the sensations. Good, inhale, bring the hands down. Releasing weight off the toes, lift the hips. Turn your fingertips towards your knees, wrists forward, coming into a wrist stretch. Fingers are spread, again, fingers are towards the knees and palms are face down. And then start to sink your weight back towards your hips. You can walk your knees in a little bit closer if you need. Warming up the wrists a little bit. And how come forward, flip the hands, fingertips, still towards the knees, but this time palms face up, sink your weight back, stretching the back of the forearms. Good, inhale, come back to neutral. Spread the fingers super wide, tuck your toes, bring your knees directly underneath your hips. Bring your hands a big old step forward. Pull your belly in. Turn your web of your fingers, so the webbing between your thumb and your index finger, turn it forward. So rather than index fingers pointing forward, your thumbs are almost pointing forward. And then drop your chest down, maybe bringing your forehead, maybe your chin to the mat, puppy pulse. The rotation of the hands helps to influence the rotation of your upper arm bones, which can be a lot more comfortable in the shoulders. Hands can be as wide as your mat. That'll ease up on the shoulders, especially if you have any impingement or pinching in the shoulder. Walking them closer together is gonna to be a little bit more intense for the chest. Good, inhale, walk your hands back up to neutral table. Keep the webs of your fingers almost all the way forward so you're still getting that external rotation of the upper arms. Draw your navel and ribs in. Step your left foot back and then your right, coming into a plank pose. Squeeze your thighs towards one another. Hug your glutes together. Pull your belly in and push the floor away with your hands. Keep your heart pulling long, neck long. Soften the gaze. Good. Take a controlled breath in. Controlled breath out. Do five more of those. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. This time, exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Good couple breaths to pedal out through the leg, shake the head side to side. Feel free to readjust the arms. If you like having the web of your thumb and index finger pointing forward, that has been my go-to lately for finding extra comfort in my shoulder girdle. Allow the knees to be soft. 
Lift up onto your toes, heels lift, and then push your hips higher to the sky. Push through the floor, push the floor away through the hands. Allow the shoulders to move up towards the ears. Allow your hips to go high, 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 and then soften the heels back down. Feel that length in the spine. Maybe let the eyes close and just take a moment to enjoy this very grounding posture that we know so well, that we come to so often, this home-based posture. Allow it to guide you back to your intention, back to that rhythmic breath. On your next breath in, inhale, look forward and bend the knees. Exhale, take a few steps to the top of your mat. Good, soften the knees. Let the heart, the head totally relax down to the floor. Option to interlace the hands around the very base of the skull. So not around the really wide part of the skull, but right where your neck meets the skull, the occipital bone. Give that a little squeeze with your wrists as you let your head dangle down. Getting a little axial extension, <laughs> which is just a fancy way of saying you're decompressing the discs between the spine. Good. Release the hands down to the floor. Inhale, halfway lift. Lengthen the heart. Pull the shoulders back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, soften the knees. Bring your hands to your hips and push the floor away as you rise up with the flat back. Good. Beginning our flow. Bring your feet hip width distance apart. Turn your palms slightly facing forward to help with that external rotation of the upper arms. Draw your shoulder blades together. Close the eyes a moment. And just feel your body. Feel your humanness. Your body is your most direct connection to your humanness. Lift and spread the toes down onto the mat. Push down through the heels, draw the knees up the thighs. Feel the glutes hug together. Draw the navel in towards the spine, lengthening the low back. Hug the shoulder blades together, lifting the chest and heart. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. Subtle lift of the chin as you draw your ears back over your shoulders. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Deep breath out. Inhale, blink the eyes open, bend your knees, sink your hips down as you stretch your arms forward, Utkatasana chair pose. Belly in, pull your thumbs back in space. Use those back muscles to lift those arms, but you've gotta externally rotate those arms, so keep those pinky fingers spinning in towards your face. Reach your fingertips forward, allow the shoulders to rise up towards the ears. Do not draw the shoulders away from the ears. Pull your belly in as you sit your weight low into your heels. Very grounding posture, getting strong in our foundation. Lift the toes up and then spread them back down one at a time. Good. Magnetize the feet together. Magnetize the knees together without actually drawing the knees towards one another. Good. Inhale. Push down through the floor. Grow tall. Stretch up. Exhale. Forward fold. Inhale. Halfway lift. Offer your chest. Exhale. Plant your hands and step back to plank. Inhale on your plank. Slightly shift forward. Exhale, option to drop your knees as you lower all the way down. Inhale, press up into your back bend of choice. You can do locust, a little baby cobra. We're still warming up. Or if you're feeling warm enough, dog. Exhale, downward facing dog, getting there anywhere that feels right for you. Inhale, lift that right leg up high. Keep the hips square. Exhale, draw your knee to your nose. Bring your gaze forward and step the foot between the hands. Spin the back heel flat, heel to heel. Windmill the arms up, warrior two. Sink down in the hips. Good, right hip pulls forward and up. So we're not bringing this femur bone into the socket and doing this posing at the mall stance. <laughs> 
we have this right hip pulling up and forward, so our pelvis is in perfect alignment here, totally neutral. Arm stretching in both directions. Shoulders soften from the ears, gaze forward, relax the face, unscrunch the toes. Front knee over front ankle. Good, on your inhale, flip your front hand and reach forward. Exhale, stretch up and back, reverse warrior. Don't change the legs, inhale, come to warrior two. Exhale, don't change the legs, side angle. Switch up the arms, front arm reaches back, top arm reaches forward. Good, don't change the legs, inhale, warrior two. Exhale, reverse warrior. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, side angle, dancing warrior. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, reverse, Smooth, moving smoothly with your breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale and hold here. Take a breath in. Spin the chest open. Good, one more breath in. Exhale, plant the hands down. Step back to three-legged plank. Take a breath in. Exhale, three-legged dog. That right leg is up and back. Good. Tuning into our core, take a breath in. Reach through the toes. Exhale, draw your knee to your nose. Give your knee a kiss. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee to right arm. Touch the arm, keep the hips high. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee to left arm, keep those hips high. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose and hold. Push the floor away, lift those hips high, look forward, inhale. Exhale, step the foot through. Coming into Anjane Asana, you can always drop that back knee down if you're wanting a more mellow practice today. Totally up to you. Front knees over front ankle. Back heel is lifted. Inhale, sweep your arms up and overhead. Exhale, sink into the hips. Good, on your inhale, turn your hands into fists. Exhale, do a pull up. Pull your arms down like you're doing a pull up as you lift the heart. Open your chest. Good, take a breath in. Exhale, like you're doing cat pose. Sweep the arms forward, chin to chest. Lean over that front thigh like you're reaching for something in front of you. Good, inhale, pull the arms back. Pull those elbows down, open the heart, cactus. Exhale, round and sweep forward like you're reaching to the front of the room. Good, inhale, peel the heart open, lift the chest. Exhale, sweep the arms forward and round. Good, inhale, last one, cactus the arms. Exhale, sweep the arms up. And inhale, come back to neutral. Bring your hands to your hips, lean forward, and take a step into one leg. Bring your right arm under the left, right arm under the left, coming into guru to arms, hands touch. Woo. Cross your left leg over your right and sink into your hips like you're doing chair pose. Often what happens here the moment we get into eagle is this. We start to kind of come apart at the seams. Draw your elbows in line with your knees and your knees in line with your elbows. And then draw the elbows up, 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 up. Elbows up high, push the hands away. Good, eagle pose. Option to bind the foot literally makes absolutely no difference in this pose. It just looks fancy. Take a breath in, breath out. Inhale, rise back up, straighten the legs, reach the arms up, inhale. Exhale, warrior three, hands go back, palms to the floor, balancing on one leg. I know that right hip is burning, mine is too. I want you to really draw your awareness to that floating leg. Use your glute and hamstring, lift your leg. Now bring your awareness to your external rotators of your arms. Palms down, squeeze your shoulders back like you're doing a locust pose, like you're doing an upward dog in the chest. Take a breath in. Exhale, stretch the arms forward. Take a breath in. 
Exhale, fingertips down, standing splits, final pose. Good, inhale, little halfway lift, pull your heart forward. Exhale, fold over that front leg. Allow the crown to, to drip down towards the floor. Good, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, draw your left leg into your chest, squat through the right leg, come down to a seat. Woo! <laughs> Water time. Good, we'll do a little core intermission before moving to our left side of our flow. Knees together, feet lift in line with the knees, reach the arms forward. Of course, option one, hands behind the low back. This is really great. If you've been taking a break from yoga, if you're wanting a gentler practice, here you're still gonna get really good core workout, but you'll be more supported. Or hands can reach forward. Or of course, for all you show offs out there, you can do full variation. Take an inhale, lower down halfway, low back into the floor, heart lifted. Exhale, lift. Inhale. Exhale. So we're coming back to that. Inhale, pattern of breath. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Inhale, hold. Palms to your chest, thumbs together. Belly in. Hold five, four, three, two, one. Reach the arms forward, lift. Roll over the knees. Downward facing dog. Close the eyes. Relax the brain. Calm the heart. Find that intention. On your next breath in, gaze forward, bend your knees. Exhale, step, walk, or hop. Inhale, halfway lift, offer your chest. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, push down through the floor. Rise up, Tadasana. Exhale, hands to the heart. And release your hands down by your side. Whew. All right, side number two. Feet hip width distance. Palms forward. Belly in, tall. Push through the floor, reach through the crown. Inhale, keep all that. Bend the knees, sink the hips. Arms reach up and forward. So you still have that grounding activity of your Tadasana. You're still pushing down through the heels as if you're trying to get taller. Magnetize your legs towards one another. Pinky fingers spin in, reach through the fingers. Shoulders reach up towards the ears. Good. Lift the toes, spread them down. Feel your roots, feel your connectedness with the earth beneath you. Sit even lower. Next breath in, push down through the floor, reach up. Exhale, hands to the heart and fold. Inhale, half lift, offer your chest. Exhale, hands plant and step back to plank. Inhale and plank, shift forward or drop your knees. Exhale, lower down, shoulder blades together. Inhale, your back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a breath. Think about lifting those hips high, still pushing the floor away. Inhale, lift your left leg up high. Exhale, knee to nose, step the foot through to the top. Warrior two. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, sink low in your stance. It's not about how wide your stance is per se. Definitely some people can stand to adjust their stance in terms of length, but it's that front knee over that front ankle we want. So if you're wanting, again, a more gentle practice, say just shorten your stance, but keep that front knee supported over that front ankle. If you're wanting to go deeper, lengthen out, get low and heavy in those hips and you should feel, at least I do, a really big stretch in that right inner thigh. And that left hip is still pulling up and forward, so your pelvis is neutral. All this effort is coming from the hips, the glutes, the femur bones rotating. It's not coming from our pelvis moving around. Inhale, flip your front hand and reach forward. Exhale, reverse your warrior. Contract through that right side. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, side angle, hand switch. Left hand back, right hand forward. Inhale, warrior two, ride the breath. 
Exhale, reverse. Inhale to your warrior. Exhale. Try and sink your movements and your breath together so they're smooth. Inhale. Exhale. Enjoy the ride. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Keep those legs strong and steady. Inhale. Exhale, side angle, and hold just a couple breaths. Spin that heart open. Take a breath in. Exhale, hands plant down. Step back to three-legged plank. Take a breath in. Exhale, three-legged dog. Left leg is up high towards the sky. Push the floor away. Breath in. Exhale, left knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, left knee to left arm. Give it a tap, hips high. Inhale. Exhale, left knee, right arm. Inhale. Exhale, bring the foot through. Good, pause a moment. Be mindful of your transitions. Anjaneyasana, high or low lunge, both are beautiful. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, sink into the hips. Cactus the arms, open the heart. Good, inhale, reach the arms forward, round the spine, chin to chest, reach. Exhale, peel the chest open, lift the heart back up, soften those knees. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, way forward. Exhale, heart opens. Last one, inhale. Exhale. This time, inhale, reach those arms up. Exhale, hands to hips. Lean into that left leg and step forward. Oh boy. <laughs> Bring your left arm under your right. Right? Yes, left arm under the right. Garuda or eagle arms. Right leg over your left. Coming into your eagle pose. Find that drishti that single point of focus as you sink your hips low. Feel free to bind the foot if you're feeling fancy. It's like having your pinky finger out when you're drinking tea. It looks nice, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> Lift your elbows up, push the hands away, open the shoulders. Good, this is our throat chakra pose. Take a breath in, breath out. Inhale, ground down, reach the arms up, untie the legs. Exhale, warrior three, hands back, leg back. Lean your third eye down towards the floor. Think about your chest, draw those shoulders back, turn your palms down. Imagine someone is pulling your fingertips and then lift that right heel up high towards the sky. Good, take a breath in. Reach the, oh, those arms forward and exhale with control, fold down, standing splits. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen your chest, you've got it. Exhale, drip the crown of the head down towards the floor and fold over that leg. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bring your right leg through your center, bring the foot down and roll through a chair or you can pistol squat down, however you wanna get there. Coming to your mat. Core intermission. Woo. Knees up, feet up, arms reach forward or behind you or wherever you did before or spice things up a little bit. Take an inhale, lower down. Good, stay here. Bring that right leg up. Reach both hands to the outside of the right leg. Lift that right shoulder off the ground, reach forward and switch left leg up, both shoulders up, hands to the outside of the left leg. Good, and switch. And switch, control your breath. Switch, switch, switch. Right shoulder is lifted, switch. Left shoulder is lifted. Good, come back to center, hands to prayer, legs forward, take a breath in. Exhale, lift, Woo boy, roll over the knees, down and facing dog. Cool. 
close the eyes. Restore rhythm to the breath. Hips high. Push with those arms. Good. On your next inhale, look forward. Exhale, bend the knees, step, walk, or hop. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, push through the floor, rise up, inhale. Exhale, hands to the heart, and release the hands down. Good. We're gonna go through one more time, each side, breath to movement, modify as needed. Feet hip width distance, chair pose. Inhale, bend your knees, sink your hips, arms reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Feel free to add a vinyasa or skip. We'll meet in down or facing dog. I feel like people always get really tense when you say breath to movement. <laughs> but breath to movement is, I feel like, so much more pleasant than <laughs> those long, steady holds. Inhale, lift that right leg up high. Exhale, knee to nose, step the foot through. Warrior two stance. Inhale, sweeps your arms up. Exhale, takes you to a reverse warrior. Inhale, straight to side angle. Exhale, straight to your reverse. Inhale, side angle. Exhale, reverse, legs steady and strong. Support the watery movement on top, inhale. Exhale, hands plant, three-legged dog. Inhale on your three-legged dog, lift your right leg high. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee to right arm, keep those hips high. Inhale. Exhale, right knee, left arm. Inhale. Exhale, knee to nose, step the foot through. Anjaneyasana, feel free to drop the knee. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, open your chest. Inhale, sweep the arms forward, lean over the thigh. Exhale, push through that front leg as you open your heart. Inhale, sweep forward and round. Exhale, open. Good. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hands through center, lean forward and lift up to stand. Equal pose, right arm under the left. Inhale, lift the elbows, sink the hips. Good, stay for a breath in, find that drishti. Inhale, push down, untie the legs, reach the arms up. Exhale, warrior three. Good, stay for the breath in, reach the arms forward. Exhale with control, fingertips down, standing splits. Inhale, halfway lift, heart forward. Exhale, bow. Inhale, left leg comes down to meet the left, half lifts. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees, sink the hips, chair pose. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands plant, optional vinyasa. You can always skip or modify. We'll meet in downward facing. Stay with that rhythm. Meeting a downward dog. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, knee to nose and step it through. Dancing warrior, inhale, warrior two. Exhale, reverse. Inhale, straight to side angle. Exhale, reverse. Inhale. Exhale, allow your breath to guide your movement. Good, last one, inhale. Exhale, hands plant, left leg up and back, three-legged dog. Take a breath in. Exhale, left knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, left knee to left arm. 
Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, left knee to right arm. Inhale, send it back. Exhale, left knee steps forward. Low or high lunge. Inhale, arms sweep you up. Exhale, peel your chest open. Inhale, roll forward like a wave, round the spine. Fingertips forward. In, excuse me, exhale, open the heart, hips forward. Inhale. Exhale, open the heart. Inhale, arms reach up. Exhale, hands through center, lean forward and step up. I've got sweat in my eye that is burning like crazy. <laughs> this time, right arm uh, over the left, so left under the right, left under the right. Right leg over the left, sink your hips down, eagle pose, shoulders lift, palms press away. Take a breath in, sit low, breath out. Inhale, untie yourself, stretch the arms up. Exhale, warrior three. Stay for the breath in, gain control. Exhale, hands reach forward, and then tick tock down, standing splits. Inhale, halfway lift, pull your heart forward. Exhale, melt the crown of your head down towards the toes. Good, inhale, halfway lift, step your right foot down to meet the left. Exhale, fold. Inhale, push through the floor, reach up to Dasana. Exhale, hands through the heart, and release your hands down by your side. Excellent job. Man, if you guys missed that hot yoga studio, just go outside. <laughs> All right, let's take a much needed malasana pose. Heels in, toes out, still facing the front of your mat or the computer, whatever you want to face. Hands to heart, take a breath in. Exhale, down we go to your squat. Couple breaths, palms pressing together, thumbs pull to the heart. Lift the chest high, slow the heart rate down, rekindle that rhythm of breath. Think about length in the spine. I learned in my recent teacher training that, that's, that there's five movements of the spine and I could have always guessed four, right? Back bend, forward fold, twist, lateral, so side bends. I was like, what's the last one? It's axial extension and decompression. So when you take aerial yoga and you hang upside down, you actually probably are getting slightly taller when you leave because you, that is a movement of the spine. I thought that was super interesting and it makes a lot of sense why hanging upside down feels so dang good. Good. Couple options. If you're craving a crow pose, take a crow pose. If you're not craving a crow pose, take a little twist. Unbind your arms, open to one side and then the other. I'm not gonna guide you too much. You can bring, if you want a more yin posture, fingertips down, allow the chin to go to your chest. This is a really great posture to spend some time in. Shortening the hip muscles, lengthening the inner thigh muscles. We'll take just about four or five more breaths here in your crow, in your malasana, doing your twists, whatever you wanna do. And then if you're ready, crows, go ahead and land from Malasana. Just come on down to your seat. Let's head onto our backs. Feet underneath the knees. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Bring your right hand into an L. And bring a L of your left, of your right hand, your index and thumb, and wedge that into the crease of your right hip. Push your right hip forward and to the right. So you are manually moving your femur bone in the hip socket when you do this. Keep your hand there. Keep your hand pressing forward. 
do not use your left hand as you draw your left leg in. Good. Then you can slide that hand out of the hip crease and stay here just another breath, no hands. Look, Ma, no hands. My mom is actually in this class, so I can say that. <laughs> And instead of using your hand to push your knee forward, which your rotation from your hip does not come from your knee, so you're not doing a whole lot when you do that. If you're gonna push, bring your hand back to that femur bone, push the femur bone forward if that felt good, but push your knee forward using the strength of your leg. Good, one more breath in. Now bring your hands behind your left thigh, shin bone, knee, whatever, and join a more passive version. So hip openers are great. They feel really good. They do good things for the body. But if you're gonna do them, it's good to take a, at least a few breaths of an active hip opener, just like we just did. Moving yourself into a long position, but using the strength of the body to get there rather than bringing your hands behind your leg and just hucking yourself into a shape. And I also find when I do that, I, I get a lot more, like drastically more range of motion in my right hip. Good, slowly unwind. Step the right foot down, other side. Left ankle crosses, left hand to an L, wedge that L into your hip crease, deep in that wedge, and push your femur bone forward and pull your flesh of that thigh to the left. So you really are manipulating your femur bone in the socket, which for a lot of people gives you more range. Then without using your hands, draw that right knee in. And let's take a couple breaths. Remove that left hand and hold here. Good. Push that left knee forward so you're engaging those outer hip muscles to accomplish the stretch. One more breath. And now bring your hands behind your right leg, shin, wherever. Take a couple breaths and a passive stretch. So last week we worked on wheel. So I want to give an opportunity for wheel. We also worked on Viprita Dandasana, Dwipada Viprita Dandasana, which is basically wheel pose, but on your forearms, which is surprisingly for a lot of people more accessible than wheel. Go ahead and release the legs down. So I'm gonna walk us through bridge. Then you're welcome to stay in bridge for round two or head to wheel or Viprita Dandasana or both if you wanna do the, those transitions. So I'm gonna walk you through a bridge first, feet under the knees. Bring your hands into these super cool robot arms. So fingertips are up. Push your elbows down to the floor. So you should feel just by pushing your elbows down, your shoulder blades draw together. Press your skull into the mat slightly. Push down through the heels, lift the hips. I love doing bridge this way. This, I don't know why, but doing this weird robot arm thing, like it makes, bridge feels so good. You can keep your little robot arms or set them down, palms up. Ground down through your heels, push down through the floor, feel your glutes squeeze together as you lift your hips up high. So you're shortening those muscles on the back and lengthening those muscles on the front. Take a breath in, push down. Exhale, lower all the way down. Good. Take a moment. Of course. Bridge round two, or we're gonna pop up into a wheel if you'd like to head to Viprita Dandasana. I'll walk through both those. I really doubt I'm gonna make Viprita today, but I'll try. So bridge round two, you're also welcome to take supported bridge. We'll all head there in a minute, um, but do whatever you want. That's the beauty of a home practice, and I cannot see you from here, so. <laughs> So if you're setting up for wheel, hands by the ears, try clocking your hands out. We did that last week and um, that's a really good little adjustment there. Push down through the feet, you know what to do. Lift up to a bridge and then rise up coming into your wheel. Or again, if you'd like to head to Dwipada, head there. We'll take a couple breaths in your wheel, your Viprita, or your bridge. Those of you in wheel, remember to 
push that floor away, push, 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 and then send your chest through the arms. Those of you who are going to Viprita, remember, you want your head very close to your hands to set up. There we go. Good, wherever you are, with control, with patience, make your way down onto your back. Bring your feet as wide as your mat. Let your knees touch. Close the eyes. Just noticing what comes up from your heart opener of choice. Study the breath. Backbends can feel like a big attack on the central nervous system. Slow it back down. Using the breath to steady you through waves of sensation. Very nice. Go ahead and open the eyes. Grab your block. <laughs> And slide your block underneath your hips for supported bridge. If you don't have a block with you, that's totally okay. If you don't have a block, you have a couple options. You can stay in this TP position. This kind of accomplishes a very similar thing to what we're doing with our block. Or you can bring the soles of the feet together, knees wide into um, Supta Baddha Konasana, reclined butterfly pose. We'll just be here a few breaths. From your bridge, lift the heels, press down through the balls of the feet to remove the block from beneath you, coming flat onto your back. Draw your knees into your chest, bring your arms to a T or cactus shape. Give your hips a little scoot to the left as you drop your knees over to the right for a twist. Those of you with any SI joint issues, I want your knees to remain stacked. If your knees do not want to remain stacked in your twist, then bring a block underneath them so that you don't go as deep into your twist. The other option would be to let your knees fall down, keep the knees stacked, and just let your left shoulder lift, bring your left hand onto your hip. So it's a bit less of a, less of a twist here. But those knees are still stacked, so your SI joint is still happy. On your breath in, draw your knees back up to center. Shift your hips a little bit off center to the right. Drop those knees to the left. Inhale, with control, back up through center. 
hips to center. Draw your knees in, take a moment without hands. Using the strength of your belly, strength of those hip flexors to draw the knees in tight. Good. And then bring the knees wide, happy baby pose, or if happy baby is not comfortable for you for any reason, just give yourself a hug. Rock side to side. Allow that low back to round. I like to bring my hands to the inside of the feet, grabbing the inside of the heels. Begin to let go of the physical effort of your practice, letting go of your asana, letting go of that tapas, that fire, that discipline of your asana. Letting go of the focus on your breath, just letting it come naturally and effortlessly. And then slowly draw your knees in. Wrap your arms around your legs, curl yourself into a ball, take a big breath in, give yourself a hug. And then exhale. Unwind, release. Set up for your Shavasana any way that makes you comfortable. You can TP the knees, grab some props, or if you'd prefer a comfortable seat, feel free to take a seat. Let the eyes close and enjoy your rest. I'll wake you when it is time.
without moving. Gradually draw your awareness back into your physical body. Noticing what it feels like to be in your body. Noticing what it feels like to be integrated and whole with your human self. Being grateful for this body we have to carry us through this life we live. Begin to deepen your breaths. Maybe wiggling the fingers and toes, maybe rocking the head side to side. And then when you feel ready, taking a deep breath in as you stretch your arms up and overhead. And then on your breath out, rolling over onto your favorite side and pausing there. Holding yourself here in fetal position. Feeling what shifts have occurred as a result of your practice. Thinking of one thing you feel especially grateful for. And then slowly with the eyes closed, making your way up to a comfortable seat. Again, bringing your left hand onto your belly, keeping you rooted into your breath, bringing your right hand onto your heart, connecting you to your heartbeat. Head slightly bowed. I want to read this excerpt from Martin Luther King Jr.'s speech called The Other America. I want to use this title for my lecture tonight, The Other America. And I use this title because there are literally two Americas. Every city in our country has this kind of dualism, this schizophrenia, split at so many parts and so every city ends up being two cities rather than one. There are two Americas. One America is beautiful for situation. In this America, millions of people have the milk of prosperity and the honey of equality flowing before them. This America is the habitat of millions of people who have food and material necessities for their bodies, culture, education for their minds, freedom and human dignity for their spirits. In this America, children grow up in the sunlight of opportunity. But there is another America. This other America has a daily ugliness about it that transforms the buoyancy of hope into the fatigue of despair. In this other America, men walk the streets and search for jobs that do not exist. In this other America, millions of people are forced to live in distressing housing conditions. In this other America, thousands of young people are deprived of an opportunity to get an adequate education. Every year, thousands finish high school reading at a seventh, eighth, and sometimes ninth grade level. Not because they're dumb, not because they don't have native intelligence, but because the schools are so inadequate, so overcrowded, so devoid of quality, so segregated that the best in these minds can never come out. There are so many people in the other America who can never make ends meet because their incomes are far too low if they even have incomes and their jobs are so devoid of quality. And so in this other America, unemployment is a reality. So the vast majority of blacks in America find themselves perishing on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. And this has caused a great deal of bitterness caused ache and anguish. These conditions are the things that cause individuals to feel that they have no other alternative than to engage in violent rebellions to get attention. And I must say tonight that a riot is the language of the unheard. And what is it America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear the plight of the black poor and has worsened over the last 12 or 15 years. I was in 1968. Bring your palms together at your heart.
Come back to that intention you set for this practice. Be thankful for what you have. Remember that the opportunity to practice yoga, the opportunity to be in the situation I know every single person in this Zoom is, is a matter of privilege. And that's something that's important to own, something that's important to respect, something that's important to acknowledge. So thank you all for joining. Thank you all for being allies. Thank you all for wanting to contribute to change, contribute to a new bright future where everyone is truly equal because we're all human. And that's the seat of enlightenment, the crown chakra. We are all one, no matter the physical bodies that separate us. We are all one consciousness. Bring your thumbs to your third eye. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. Namaste.